In this lecture, let's go ahead and let's style up this food item component which we have up over here. So let's go to the food item.jsx and over here you will be able to see that we have a pretty basic structure for this particular component as of now. So we are going to improve that very soon. So let's first start off with the most external div which we have. So this does not have any styling. So we have to set up a CSS class for this div. So let's create a new module here called as food item dot module dot CSS. So food item dot module dot CSS. And first of all, let's go ahead and let's define the styling for this div. So in order to define the styling, first of all, I have to import the module which we have just created. So import these styles from dot slash food item dot module dot CSS. And let's say for this one, I want to create a class in this module called as item container. And that's because this div actually acts as a container for the item which we have. So over here, I would say, all right, create a class called as item container. And this is going to have a couple of CSS properties. So first of all, we want to set the width of this particular item container or the component over here. So here we actually want to design this components to look like a card. Therefore, I'll go ahead and set a fixed width for this one. So let's say this is going to be 300 pixels wide. And as we want to create a card out of this, we also have to set the border radius as well so as to make the edges rounded. So the border radius is going to be let's say 8 pixels. So if I save this, if I go back here, you won't be able to see any kind of changes here as of now. And that's because you have to now apply the styling to this div. So let's go ahead and let's do that. So the class name is going to be styles.itemContainer. So now it takes this class and applies the styling to this div. Now this still isn't visible. So let's go ahead and let's add some shadows over here. So in order to add shadows, I would say box shadow is going to be 0, 4 pixels, 6 pixels, the RGBA value is going to be 0 for red, 0 for green and 0 for blue because we sort of want a blackish or grayish shadow there. And we are only going to set the opacity value for this one as let's say 0.1. So now if I go back here, as you can see, I'm not sure if that's visible, but there's a slight amount of shadow here. So as you can see, we have a shadow up over here and the edges over here are rounded as well. It's visible for me, but I'm not sure if it's visible for you. After this, let's go ahead and let's add a couple of other properties as well. So for starters, let's add some margin between the cards because right now they look cramped up. So I want the margin from all the sides to be 20 pixels. So margin is going to be 20 pixels. Now, as you can see, we have margin from all the sides. I also want to set the overflow to hidden. If I do that, now as you can see, the image does not flow out of the card and it's kind of contained within this card itself. And this is what the card looks like right now. Now let's also go ahead and let's change the font of this a little bit as well because this font does not suit well for this card. Therefore, I would say the font family is going to be I will use a font which is poly sans and sans serif. If I go back now, as you can see, this is what the font looks like. All right, so we have pretty much styled up this outermost part of our component, which is this card. Now let's style up this image which we have. So for the image, what we simply want to do is we want to set the maximum width of the image to 100% so that we make sure that the image does not exceed the card. So in order to do that, I'll go back here. Let's create a class for this image as well called as item image. So I'll define a class for the image item image. Let's apply this class over here to this image. So I would say the class is going to be styles dot item image that's it i could go back here and i could simply say the max width which this image could have would be 100 percent of the parent which means 100 percent of this item container which ensures that the image does not go out of the bounds here and also i want to say that i want to maintain the aspect ratio of the width and height so that the image does not appear stretched 
So I would say the height is going to be auto and that's it. Now the image is styled as well. Now after this, let's work on styling this content over here inside the card, which is this text right here as well as this button. So the content inside the card is going to be just this text, which we have. So in order to go ahead and style that up, it's actually present in an h1 tag. But what I could do is I could create a div and contain this inside a div so that we could style that div. So I'll create a div here and I'll name this particular div and give it a class name of let's say styles dot let's call it as item content. So if you create this div, you could not just add the title, but you could also add a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So if you want to display some other information or other details about the recipe, you could do that. And in there, instead of using this H1, I would instead use a paragraph tag. So P tag and place this food title inside the paragraph tag instead so that it does not appear humongous. Let's get rid of this H1 tag. And let's also assign a class to this paragraph tag as well. So the class name is going to be, let's say styles dot. And as this represents the item name, let's name this thing as item name. Now let's define the classes, which is item content and item name over here. So over here, I would say dot item name. And before that dot item content. All right. So if I go back now, this is what the card looks like. So let's go ahead and for the item content, I would set the font family to a real Helvetica sans serif. I would align the text over here to the center. So text align is going to be center. So it aligns the text to the center instead of aligning it to the left. And after this, for the item name, which we have, I would increase the font a little bit. So the font size is going to be, let's say one EM that increases the font of the items. It's not being reflected here for some reason. I'm not sure why. So let me hit refresh on this one. And after setting this, I want to set the font weight to let's say 600 to make it a little bit bolder. So font weight is 600. And let me set the color to hash 393 E46. So if I go back now, as you can see, this is what the card looks like. Now the final thing which is remaining to style up over here is this particular button right here. So for this button, let's go ahead and let's add a class real quick. So I'll go back here, create a class for this button. So I would say the class name is going to be styles dot. That's going to be item button. Let's define that class here. So I would say dot item button. And over here, I need to say that I want to change the background color of this button to a greenish shade. So I would say the background color is going to be, you could directly set it to aqua, but I would use a specific color, which is hash 29 BB 89. So this is what the button looks like, but you'll notice that the button still looks retro and that's because it still has the border. So let's first get rid of the border from the button. So the border is going to be none. So that removes the border and the button looks more modern. Now let's change the text color over here to white. So the color is going to be white. So the text color is now white, but as you can see, the button kind of looks cramped up. So let's set the padding for this button as well, which is 10 pixels. So I would say the padding is going to be 10 pixels from all the sides. Now the button looks a little bit bigger. Let's set the font size over here to 14 pixels, 14 pixels. And now let's make the font a little bit bolder. So the font weight is again going to be 600. So font weight is 600. And one more thing which you need to do is whenever you hover over this button, the cursor should change to a pointer. So here I would say change the cursor to a pointer. So now if I hover over this button, now we have this particular pointer right here. And now let's make this button a little bit curved as well by adding the border radius. So the border radius is going to be 10 pixels from all the sides. So now the button will have some curved edges. And if you don't want that much of a curve, you could reduce down this thing to five pixels. And as you can see, it will reflect up over here. All right. So the button is styled up, but it is not placed in a proper position. 
So let's also create a container for the button as well. So inside the food item, I could actually place this button inside its own div. So I could create a div over here and let's assign it a class as button container. So styles dot button container and let's take this button and place it inside this button container div. And now we simply have to style this button container div. So over here I would say dot button container and let's go ahead and let's add some kind of margin from the bottom because it does not have any kind of space from the bottom. So here I would say all right the margin from the bottom is going to be 20 pixels that adds a margin from the bottom and let's go ahead and let's set the display of this thing to flex. So display is going to be flex. So we are doing this display as flex because let's assume if you want to place another element over here to the side of the button such as let's say the rating of that recipe you could place that over here as well. And then if you want to align this button to the center by making this flex what you could do is you could say justify the content to have some space around and this will automatically center this button inside a food container. So after this I could also align the text of this thing to center so whatever text which you have inside the button is not kind of attached to the left. So the text align is going to be center. So once we are done with this this is what our card looks like and as you can see our recipe application currently looks absolutely fine. So right now after styling this we are pretty much done with the leftmost part of our application which is to show the different kind of food items which we have and if you go ahead and change this thing to something like pasta as you can see this content over here on the left hand side changes in real time and it still has the same styling as before and everything works absolutely fine. So the next part which we need to work on is to go ahead and make this view recipe button functional. So whenever we click on this view recipe button, we want to get all the recipe details for that particular food item on the right hand side of our application. So let's work on creating the detailed view for our food items in the next lecture.